Commuting by e-bike is getting more and more popular in the United States. Unfortunately, this has not yet resulted in any major overhauls to the infrastructure for cycling in America. The state of cycling in America, if you're a commuter, is one of dangerous roads, a lack of bike lanes, riding with traffic, and really not any safe places to lock up when you do get to where you are going. All of these safety hazards and security issues do result in a lack of cycling in America in general. When you consider that roads like this are considered good cycling infrastructure, you realize how crappy infrastructure for cycling is in America if you are a commuter. But e-bikes have been a massive part of getting people to even think about cycle commuting in the first place because sometimes you can keep up with traffic and you're not on the roads as long as you would be. You're going a little bit quicker. You're in those less safe situations for a shorter amount of time. Today, we are gonna talk about how to cycle safely in an unsafe environment. We are going to offer you some tips on dealing with, quite frankly, shitty infrastructure from one of the worst cycling cities in the world Los Angeles, California. We'll talk about how to start cycle commuting, how to stay safe out there, and which e-bikes we would recommend to get started on. So the first tip we're going to offer you guys might sound like a little bit of a vague one, but I promise you it is not. It is that you absolutely have to feel safe when you're commuting. I can 100% guarantee you that if you don't feel safe, you are not going to commute. The question is, how do you do this? It takes a special kind of insanity to commute by bicycle in Los Angeles, so I do quite a bit so that I feel safe during my commute. First things first, of course, I am always wearing a helmet. During the daytime, I usually run headlights that go throughout the entire day. And then at nighttime, I run two, sometimes three tail lights. Usually one tail light that's solid and at least two that are strobes. A lot of my safety features have to do with visibility. You have got to be seen out there, otherwise you're going to run into some issues. So I also generally wear a fluorescent shirt at night. My favorite part about cycling home at night is the cool outfits. Wow, wow, wow. Also, I try to have a helmet that has some sort of reflective material on it or is just bright in general. As much as possible, I would make sure that your bike lights up as well. If you've got reflective panniers and stuff like that, those are other great things you can put on there so that you are making sure you can be seen. Now, not all safety tips, of course, have to do with being seen. There are other things you can do to feel safe too. For me, I like to ride a class three e-bike because generally speaking, I'm on 25 to 35 mile per hour roads. I can keep up with traffic and be less likely to be passed. Being passed is dangerous because people, when they overtake you, sometimes aren't going wide enough. Um, so if they're not going wide enough, there's a good chance you might get hit. Or if you're feeling like you have to get stuck kind of in a corner, uh, maybe between a parked car and a moving car, it's not a great place to be in. Talking about where you should ride, of course, ideally you're in a bike lane. A protected bike lane is always the best, but that is not usually available in Los Angeles. There are a bunch of shared bike lanes. Sometimes you are on roads that don't even have bike lanes, but they are still cycling roads. There's a couple of things you can do in California to keep yourself safe in this situation. Legally in California, this is just for California, you should check your local laws. Basically what you can do is take up an entire lane. It's called taking the lane. If a car does not have enough space to safely pass you within a lane, you are completely entitled to take up that entire lane until you feel safe enough to move to the side. In some of the footage I'm showing you right now, you will notice that most people are changing lanes to go around me. This keeps me so much safer than if I'm gonna squeeze into kind of a corner and go as close as I can to the curb or to park cars next to me. You don't wanna be going near parked cars, you can get hit by car doors. Plus, if people feel like they have to kind of sneak by you, they will try to do it. And that is much more likely to result in you getting hit as opposed to just making them go as wide as you possibly can. Another thing you're allowed to do in a lot of Los Angeles, not everywhere, is hop up onto the sidewalk if you are feeling unsafe in traffic. This doesn't mean that you can run over pedestrians and kind of pass them. You should be going about the same speed as pedestrians, but you are entitled to go up on the sidewalk if you feel like you need to. What I would also do is leave yourself a lot of time. 
So if you leave yourself more time, you're gonna be more likely to take a safer and quieter route. You can find these quieter routes by using the Bosch Connect app. Google is actually pretty good. Google Maps, their cycling features generally take you on pretty safe routes. And of course, you can look up other people's routes similar to yours if you're using something like the People for Bikes Ride Spot app. It is obviously up to you to decide when you feel safe enough on your bike, but I can promise you, until you feel safe, you will not be cycle commuting. My second tip for you guys is that you shouldn't commit to this e-bike commuting full time at first you're gonna give up on it. That's just how we're wired. It's hard to break these habits. Hold on to your car. I know you secretly kind of love sitting in this traffic. It keeps you away from home for just those couple seconds longer. Fun fact for you guys, when I drive home, it takes me about 30 minutes. When I cycle home, it takes about 22. Save a little bit of time. But anyway, don't feel like you're gonna go into it completely gung-ho because you likely will burn out and end up resenting it. And that's not what we want. We're trying to affect real change in your life here. So give yourself some time to acclimate to it. Do once, twice, maybe three times a week at first, and then see if you can ramp it up from there. My last tip for you guys, if you're going to start commuting by e-bike, is to form a relationship with your local bike shop, or your LBS for short. This is very important because if you are looking to maintain this bike and make it a vehicle that you can use on a daily basis for a long time, you need to make sure it's maintained properly. They're not quite as hefty as cars when it comes down to it. They're not gonna be quite as resilient in a lot of situations. So you wanna make sure you have a relationship with a shop that can help you out. The best way to form a relationship with a bike shop, plain and simple, is to buy a bike from them. Bring them some business in some capacity. Uh, I would definitely make sure if they don't have electric bikes or something like that at the place you're going to go, make sure they're gonna work on the type of bike that you're gonna be able to bring them. Uh, a lot of places will not work on bikes that weren't bought from them. That's just the plain and simple truth. So make sure you could confirm that first. What I would make sure again is that they have worked on those type of bikes before, that they have some experience with it because a lot of the direct to consumer bikes that are Kickstarter bikes and stuff like that, no one has experience with them and it's very hard to get in touch with manufacturers for the local bike shops. So they're not gonna be super willing to work on those type of, bi type of bikes. Some places, we are one of them, Fly Rides does this, will offer service packages. So if you're going to be using the bike a lot, it's gonna save you some money to have uh, the service package bought and just have the tune-ups and all that paid for throughout the year instead of going in to pay individually for tune-ups. However you are able to do it, you need a relationship with a solid bike shop that's going to be able to help you out with your e-bike specifically. So as I promised, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about which bikes you should be considering if you wanna start commuting. Now I have done a couple other videos on this, so make sure you go watch those as well, because they've got some good ideas too, but let's talk a little bit more about it for this video. Personally, I like to commute on class three e-bikes. A couple of drawbacks of the class three e-bike is that in some localities, they are not considered bicycles. So they are considered something more like a moped or something like that. So you can't use them technically in bike lanes. So that's something to be aware of. So for people like that, class one bikes might make a little bit more sense. One of the commuters I've been using personally for quite some time now is the Gazelle Citizen T10 Speed. I have given this bike rave reviews. I really, really dig it. Um, 28 mile per hour speeds and it's pretty low profile. Kind of blends in with a regular bike, which is something that I like. It looks nice to me. So solid job by Gazelle there. The Bulls Grinder Evo is another great option. Bulls has got some great commuters this year. I'm really excited to see their stuff. And you'll see more on this bike in a couple of weeks when I release another video. Of course, from Specialized, their Turbo Vado has been a commuting favorite for many, many years. So you can check out the Vado series as well. And there's a lot of different options of Vados too. So you're not just stuck with like a $6,000 bike. They have uh, lower end ones as well if you're looking for an entry level option that also goes class three speeds. 
I think Reese and Mueller, if you're looking for something long-term, is always gonna have great stuff. They've got everything from full suspension commuters to full suspension commuters with no top tube, to hardtails, to regular road bikes, to foldables, they've got it all. So Reese and Mueller is always worth a look if you're looking for something that really is gonna last a very long time. Of course, some other things you're gonna to wanna to think about if you're becoming an e-bike commuter is your bike security. We have a video on that. You should definitely check that out. Also, where you're gonna recharge and how long it's going to take, if you're gonna be able to do it at work, how much battery life you're gonna need. There is a lot of planning to do when you're thinking about starting this. So this video is a great place to start, but I'm also gonna refer you guys back to our commuting playlist because I think that is another great place to do some research so that you can figure out how you can commute on an e-bike. Like this video, you guys, if you found it helpful. Let me know below if you're thinking about doing this, if you have questions about why I do it and why I think it's the best way to get around. Let me know. Uh, leave a comment below and I will answer it for you. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Be safe out there and enjoy the ride.